Now, as we're looking at this equal opportunity that we want students to have for participation in academic, non-academic, and extracurricular activities with non-disabled kids to the maximum extent appropriate for the needs of that kid, we're looking in different settings. One is the academic setting. We often think about that. We want them to get through classroom content but please remember when we talk about academic settings, we're also talking about their ability to participate in group discussions, oral reports, and presentations. Is there anything about their speech language profile that may be interfering with their ability to do that for participation at those levels? We need to keep that in mind. And the other, of course, is the non-academic and the extracurricular services and activities. Our kids need to have equal opportunity to participate in counseling services, athletics, transportation, health services, recreational activities, meals, recess periods, special interest groups or clubs, referrals to agencies, employment of these students. What I want to stress here is I did not make up this list. This came out of IDEA. These kids are actually protected and supported so that they have equal opportunity for participation in all of those areas. That's how far IDEA goes, which means that's how far our federal mandate goes. For seeing to it that we're giving them the supports and services that will allow them to have equal opportunity for participation in any of those areas that they want to be part of. It's a very different way of thinking about what we're trying to help them do.